Welcome to worship today with Kieseltown United Methodist Church. I'm so glad you're here. It's the first Sunday in Lent. Easter is coming. The resurrection and life that Christ brings is on its way. And we celebrate that. We, we break today. If we're fasting during this time of Lent, we, we take a little break and enjoy the grace of God, and we celebrate all that Jesus Christ is doing. I want to invite us to open with prayer. Our prayer today is a collect for the first Sunday in Lent. And let's pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who were assaulted by many temptations. And as you know our weaknesses, the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I am reading um, Mark chapter 1, 9 through 15. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And intimately be coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Intimately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let Jesus be good news. Mark is the shortest of the Gospels, likely the first written, and it begins with these words. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John is likely the last of the four Gospels, and it concludes with these words that there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The good news of Jesus did not end with the four Gospels. It doesn't all fit in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark wrote the beginning. John wrote, I can't fit all the good news into all the books in the world. These verses help direct us to what the good news of Jesus is. It's not just words on a page or a record of Jesus' sermons or acts. The good news is Jesus. The more we know Jesus, the more we know the good news of God, the more we allow the grace of Jesus in our understanding, speaking, and doing, especially in our relationships with God and neighbor, the more we will be part of the good news of Jesus. Mark shared the beginning John shared, there is too much to share. There is no end to the good news of Jesus because Jesus still lives today and Jesus would be the good news in our lives. Jesus, the good news, has not ended. Jesus is still good news. Let Jesus be good news in us. In Mark 1, John the Baptist was lifting Jesus up, building him up, so high, really, really high. Jesus is more powerful than I. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you get a load of Jesus. I am not worthy to bow and stoop down and untie the thong of Jesus' sandals. I only baptized you with water, but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit of God. All these sinners were around John the Baptist who had come to the Jordan and they were confessing their sins, not silently, out loud they named their sins. There was no hiding it. If you couldn't tell by looking at this crowd, you could listen to who the sinners were. Jesus did not stand far off from those unworthy like John the Baptist, 
but was baptized by John. John, who proclaimed himself unworthy and having a lesser baptism and weak, had Jesus in his arms to bless him. John the Baptist got to do baptism for Jesus. Jesus did not wait for all the sinners to clear out. Jesus went into the same waters where people told all the wrongs they did. In the midst of sinners confessing their wrongs and the unworthy John the Baptist, Jesus was there and the heavens were ripped open and the Holy Spirit came down and God the Father spoke. Jesus, the good news, the Holy Spirit and the Father in the center of sinners and the unworthy. It still happens. We gather for worship as sinners, seeking God's grace, and Christ comes into our midst, forgiving sins, raising hope, giving life. Jesus Good news for all sinners. United Methodist pastor, Reverend Aaron Beasley, wrote a chapter in the book, I'm Black, I'm Christian, I'm Methodist. She wrote how in the late 1700s, black people were rejoicing in the good news of Jesus Christ that Methodists were sharing. The freedom of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the body of Jesus in the church was for everybody. It didn't matter your age, nation, race, class, male or female. The grace of Jesus was open to all. Good news. In 1774, John Wesley, one of United Methodism's founders, wrote an anti-slavery tract which was widely spread. Wesley wrote, Liberty is the right of every human creature. As soon as he breathes the vital air and no human law can deprive him of that right. In 1780, Methodist leaders in Baltimore agreed that slavery was contrary to the laws of God, man, and nature, and hurtful to society, contrary to the dictates of conscience and true religion. In 1785, the first discipline for the Methodist Episcopal Church in the United States condemned slavery and prohibited Methodists from owning slaves. Freeborn Gerritsen was one of the earliest American-born Methodist preachers. Doesn't he have a great name, Freeborn? He did not let Jesus be good news just for him. He preached to all kinds of people. He preached Jesus the good news. He preached abolition of slavery. Freeborn preached to a 17-year-old slave named Richard Allen. I want to tell you a little bit about Richard. Richard Allen wrote this about letting Jesus the good news in his life after hearing Freeborn's preaching. I was awakened, brought to see myself poor, wretched and undone, and without the mercy of God must be lost. I cried unto him who delighted to hear the poor sinner. And all of a sudden, my dungeon shook, my chains flew off, and glory to God, I cried. In 1792, at St. George Methodist Church, Richard Allen, and Absalom Jones were down at the altar praying. But some of the ushers were angry. They wanted white people to, pre to pray first. 
at the altar and black people last. They wanted white people to receive communion first and black people last. They dragged Reverend Richard Allen and Reverend Absalom Jones away from the altar where they were seeking Jesus in prayer. Later on, Richard Allen reflected on white Methodist preachers undermining the ministry of Jesus' good news. They were much opposed to an African church and used very degrading and insulting language to us to try to prevent us from going on. We all belong to St. George's Church. We felt ourselves much cramped, but my dear Lord was with us and we believed. If it was his will, the work would go on, that we would be able to succeed in building the house of the Lord. We established prayer meetings and exhortation meetings, and the Lord blessed our endeavors, and many souls were awakened. But the elder soon forbid us holding any such meetings. But we viewed the forlorn state of our colored brethren, and that they were destitute of a place of worship. Richard Allen believed the good news of Jesus Christ when he was 17 years old. Richard ran into racism in his home church where he served, he preached there, he was ordained a deacon to serve there. The good news for Richard was not in a perfect church or congregation. The good news for Richard was Jesus was not finished being good news, not for him, not for his black brothers and sisters, not for all the church in all of the world and everybody. Let Jesus be good news for everybody. Jesus is not done being good news. Jesus is not done with you or me. Jesus has good news for you. And Jesus, good news to be. That sentence came out a little weird. What I was wanting to say is, for Jesus to be good news for you, what you do and how you love others to be good news in your life and through our lives. Jesus went into Galilee preaching the good news. Galilee was outskirts, backwater, remote, not the political, religious, or financial center. Jesus, the good news, still goes to Galilee's with words of life. This is the time. The kingdom of God is near. Repent, believe the good news. Galilee's like Texas, and Arkansas. Jesus, last week, about three million households and businesses in Texas were without power for days. Some still are. No heat, bursting water pipes, supplies scarce. In Texas, there are United Methodist churches that opened warming shelters serving three meals a day, gathering cots and blankets. Reverend Paul S. Camilla at Laurel Heights United Methodist Church in San Antonio, Texas, said about two thirds of his congregation was without electricity and they opened the church as a warming shelter for people in their community, including their pets. At First United Methodist Church in Wharton, Texas, a family of seven came to the congregation's attention. 
One family member was in a wheelchair and another was on oxygen. They could not find a hotel or motel room. First UMC had a wheelchair ramp and was handicap accessible. They had power for the oxygen machine and they had been the shelter in the storm for that family of seven. At First United Methodist Church in Hot Springs, Arkansas, they were setting up a warming shelter for the homeless overnight, but it was so cold, conditions so poor, they decided to house the homeless 24 seven. Police driving around in hot springs when finding someone without shelter would take them to the church. In a news article this week, there was a picture of the pastor and she was offering Holy Communion, her arms high with the broken bread of Jesus' body. Jesus, the good news, in the midst of homeless shelter, church, all wrapped into one. Here at Kieseltown United Methodist Church, we were looking at icy weather this last Thursday and Friday, and we had it. That's when we usually pack backpacks on Thursdays and deliver them on Fridays for children at Cub Run Elementary and Montevideo Middle School who need some food help on the weekends. Wednesday, we had a group of great servants packing and delivering that weekend food early before the storm came. A lot of them were saying, those kids need their weekend food. Let Jesus be good news. Not just think of Jesus. Not just study on Jesus. Not simply give assent that Jesus sounds like a good idea. Let Jesus be good news in your life. Let Jesus be good news for everyone.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning with the prayers for the people and close with the Lord's prayer. Let's pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for all the departed. Pray for those who have died, for their loved ones and their, those mourning their loss. I ask your prayers for the needs that are on your heart today. Lift them up to God in prayer. I ask you to share your thanksgivings with God. Let us share our thanks. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially in this Black History Month. Some of those Methodists who have blessed us so much, Harry Hosier, Richard Allen, Jerina Lee, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Charles Albert Tinley, our former district superintendent, Sam Neesmith, even our current bishop, Sharma Lewis. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And let us pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, Kiesel Down United Methodist Church family. It's hard to believe that it's almost been a year since we have shut our doors for COVID. How we started, a lot of things were unknown then. I remember talking to Joel about Perhaps we could do a few online devotions in order to keep us connected for the three or four weeks that we'd be closed. Well, three or four weeks have come and gone, and now we have done 37 online services, four Easter Resurrection Egg devotionals, 27 Advent devotionals, 
and seven in-person live stream services. Over 1,094 hours of video has been watched by our community. We've gained 42 subscribers to our YouTube channel and our content has been placed in the hands of 11,766 different people. 11,766. That's amazing how we're reaching people for Christ. Some thank yous are in order. People have helped make this happen. We had a laptop that was donated for our live stream services. Also, a camera. We have hours of people for the recorded services, reading scripture, playing multiple different instruments, working hard to make this a blessing for everyone during this difficult time. So how have people been watching with us? 13% have been watching on their tablets. 13% on their smart TV. 29% have been watching on their computers. And 45% of people have been watching on their smartphone. Now I think that says a lot because almost everyone has a smartphone nowadays. It's a real blessing to be able to reach those people, especially during this time. So what have we discovered about this outreach? Well, first, it was just my vision to help our church stay connected for a couple weeks until we could get back to in-person services. But God had bigger plans. The data that has come back has shown us that we are engaging with many people, especially with the live worship services. People are watching, they're sharing, and they're commenting, and they're worshiping with us and being blessed by our online ministry. Let's talk a little bit about the differences in the YouTube services versus live streaming. The live video has a much larger reach and engagement than pre-recorded video. Our reach with the YouTube services was about 46 families for each service. For live streaming, 58 families were watching live and after the fact. However, our content for each service was put on average into the hands of 200 to 400 different people. Kieseltown is reaching far beyond the church walls, bringing the message of Christ to the world. As we take steps to prepare our church to return to in-person worship, we realize now at this point that our online ministry is very viable and should continue. That's why I am thankful that the trustees have agreed to let us purchase a new video system in order to achieve this. Some of you might be curious of what this new system might look like in our sanctuary. I put a couple pictures together to maybe help paint the picture a little bit. Now, if you remember, for our previous live stream services, we had quite a mess in the front of the sanctuary. We had a table, laptop, multiple cameras, cords going everywhere. Not necessarily the best situation for a permanent installation. However, we were blessed to have this to reach people when we had come back to in-person services, even though we weren't prepared yet for the more permanent setup. Let's take a look at the camera that we're going to be purchasing. This is a PTZ Optics camera. It can be aimed and zoomed from a different location by an operator. In this picture of the back sanctuary wall, I have photoshopped an image of that camera to kind of give an idea what it might look like installed. And here's a picture that I took from a ladder to simulate the vantage point from the camera. Now, mind you, this camera can be zoomed and moved around to the entire sanctuary, filming what is needed at the time. Now I'm going to read some scripture from Romans. This is Romans 10, 14 through 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. In biblical times, the only way to carry good news was to bring it physically, walking from one place to another. Technological advances, however, have opened up numerous additional communication channels, all of which we can use to amplify the rate at which we spread the word. Would you pray with me? Lord, bless this new ministry outreach here at Kieseltown United Methodist. May we bring you to a hurting world in a new and fresh way. Thank you that we have been able to worship during this difficult time through technology. I pray that it continues to grow and bless many in days to come. In Jesus' name.
Amen. We're at a time of giving in our worship service today. I want to give thanks to everyone who shares their tithes and offerings with Kieseltown United Methodist Church, and especially as you share yourselves. Our church is getting ready to purchase a video camera system for streaming live our worship services uh, when we come back to in-person worship so we can do that better and into the future. The basic system is going to be about $6,000. If you'd like to help, that would be a great way and timely way to give at this time in addition to our regular tithes. Also, in giving ourselves, we want to encourage us to pray and offer support and encouragement to our district superintendent, Reverend Victor Gomez. He's been serving our district here on Harrisonburg. That's a big job. He's now going to be serving regularly the Winchester District as well. Two districts. That's a big load for our district superintendent. And he's going to be giving of himself. He's going to need our prayer, our support. And in the future, there will probably be times when our Harrisonburg District can partner more closely with the Winchester District. it will be a chance for us to give ourselves more in the ecumenical connection that we have as United Methodists. So another chance for us to give ourselves as well. Let's have a, have a prayer in this time of giving. Lord, we thank you that we can join in giving as you have given so much to us. Lord, bless our tithes and offerings. Bless um, a new video camera streaming system our church will be getting. Let it bless people Connect them to worship and prayer and the word of God and faith in Jesus Christ for years and years to come. Lord, we do pray for our, our district superintendent, Victor Gomez. Bless him as he continues to give himself and ministry to us and to the Winchester district. Lord, help us as we can give ourselves in encouragement and prayer to Victor, to our district in Winchester, Lord that the grace and ministry and life of Jesus Christ may be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing blessing today comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. But don't stop too soon. Don't settle in for only part of the blessing. Listen to the whole thing, especially what this word from God is blessing us to do. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us through grace, gave us eternal comfort and good hope. Don't stop there. Comfort your hearts and strengthen them. Don't stop there. In every good work and word. May the grace of Jesus Christ work through us and well up in us for every good work and word. Amen. Amen.